Hello, hello, welcome to uh, May Coalition Call. That was um, that was Chamaco. Let me know if I'm pronouncing this correctly. Chamaco Noble and uh, the Move to a Mint song by Chamaco Mobile, and it's pretty awesome. Um, so. Welcome, Deb, from Troy. Good to see you. At least an image of you. Um, and Paula, hi, Judith. Good to see you. Rob, uh, Bob, Mark, Deanville. Hi, Dylan. Um, you know, we're full-fledged into the campaign. I want y'all to think about, um, as we move along in this meeting, what it means to be um, human and contrasting that with what a corporation is. That's why a lot of us are here, because we all know that a corporation is not a, is not a person, right? And that money is not free speech. And um, until the end of the month, we're doing an, I believe, corp is a person. And that wonderful graphic um, that Alfonso made um, was a good example of some ways that everybody can participate in that um, campaign. Share it uh, in your within your affiliates. Share it on your social media. Send it out on your you know an email, um, and come up with your own fun things. You know, I'll believe a corporation is a person when um, we had a good one on Nation Builder today when they put one in jail, um, and we all know that that's not happening anytime soon. So. Don't think they'll ever be in person. Uh, go over the agenda review and some few protocols. Um, we're going to have an update from Dolores on the We the People Amendment. You know, we're moving right along. We had our introduction last month, finally. And um, uh, folks are coming on every week. So very excited about that. Um, and then we're going to have updates from our affiliates, from y'all. So we're super excited to see what y'all are doing and what's um, inspiring and um, building your passion currently. And um, and then we're gonna move on to announcements and um, then some, you know, actions uh, that we could participate in the spring. Talk a little bit about fundraising and then we'll move on to national and local um, state events. As you know, we use the stack system. If you want to get on stack, just say or raise your hand or put in the chat your stack. Let's um, try to stay concise. I'm super excited about you all being here. And we want to make this, um, you know, as, as interesting as possible. So the way to do that is to keep it moving and hearing from as many people as possible, I think, personally. So um, without further ado, we're going to open it up to Dolores to give us an update on what's happening with the We the People Amendment. How are you doing, Dolores? Hey, good evening, everyone. Um, yeah, so I guess I'll just go right into it. Um, we currently have um, on the We the People Amendment uh, 45 co-sponsors. Our goal for this year is 100, so we're you know chugging along. It's just been the first few weeks. Um, so for those who need more information about contacting your reps, um, we have a link here. I can put it in the chat just for this campaign of this Congress. Um, have it there. Um, and yeah, I wanna also open up the floor for any questions any folks might have. No? Okay, well, if not, that's our update. Um, and you can always see who the co-sponsors are um, on congress.gov. I'll also put that in the chat for this specific uh, We the People Amendment. And yeah, that's my update. Hope everyone's having a good week so far. Yes. 
Can we get a little bit of an update on what's going on with the Senate campaigns and where we're at on that? Or would you like me to do that real quick? You go ahead, yeah. So, of course, we're looking for 100 um, House reps, but we really want to introduce this um, year uh, in the Senate. And we have, um, we're building, you know, uh, building momentum for that. The California delegation has, um, they're in the process of rescheduling their meeting with Padilla. Um, of course, we have um, uh, folks in Minnesota that are looking to um, still connect with Kobershar's office and um, in, in Atlanta Ossoff's office. But also we have three uh, Congress members running for um, a vacating Feinstein seat. So um, the pledge campaign's on for getting them on board. They're, they are all three prior co-sponsors of the We the People Amendment. So we think that's a really, um, a really good avenue and to build enthusiasm um, for entering into the Senate um, campaign. So I just wanted to put that out there too. Um, I think it's doable this year, you know, for the first time in a while, Democrats are holding the Senate and um, we have, um, and then Greg, um, you want to tell them a little bit about the Senate target in Vermont? Well, there's only one rep in Vermont. Peter Welsh was who was a co-sponsor last time. He is now the senator. So we are working on um, uh, organizing some people to uh, get the new congressperson on board. And by doing it, and hopefully that will be an easy accomplishment. And then once done, people will feel confident, assured, uh, and willing to try to then uh, reach to Welsh. And a couple of the people who we've already identified who are going to be in the virtual call with the new congressperson um, work on Welch's campaign. So they, and it's a fairly small state and these people run around and they see them at the grocery store and the like. So um, it's not like California or some other place. So um, they're hopeful and we're hopeful that uh, he could be a live wire to possibly become uh, the uh, champion in the Senate. Time will tell. Yeah, time will tell, but I think we have, um, you know, one of the best chances we've had um, since the introduction, the first introduction in the House. So um, I'm pretty excited about it. Um, I see in the chat, Greg, uh, Mark had said he likes my, I believe a corporation is a person when one goes to jail. That was actually our nation builder liaison came up with that one today. Uh, mine is uh, when one gets deported to Martha's Vineyard. Um, coming from Florida, I know it's bad. It's it's in terrible taste, but um, you know, human beings are getting treated like that. Why corporations, you know, get the red carpet rolled out for them? So I would like to open it up for announcements. What are y'all doing? Um, you know, let us know what's happening in your neck of the woods. What you're uh, working on. What you're passionate about right now. And also, if you could give us uh, an answer to that. Uh, or a response. I'll believe a corporation is a person win. If y'all want to do that at any time during the meeting, just go ahead and put it in the chat. Uh, and we'll read everybody's um, off before the end of the meeting. Sandy, you want to open this up? Welcome. There we go. I guess you can hear me right now. <laughs> um, okay, so some, I'm just writing these little notes so I don't forget. Um, and then, okay, so the good news is, the big news here in Ohio is that, um, thanks to Greg, <laughs> um, we have a state representative who has introduced or has done, um, has, has, has had, he had his sponsorship, um, testimony today to, um, introduce our We the People Amendment or support for the We the People Amendment in the Ohio legislature. Now, if you've been hearing anything about the Ohio legislature, you know how unbelievably gerrymandered it is. So we just, 
you know, there's not much chance that it's going to pass, but we really want to get a hearing. And this guy, he's very much for, for what we're doing. So um, he's, I think he's tired of being the ignored minority in the, in the state house, even though most people agree with what he's pushing. <laughs> um, so that's excellent news. Um, move to mend it, central Ohio. will have a booth hopefully at the Comfest, which is a big festival we have here. It's been going on since the 1970s started by a bunch of hippies and it's continuing on. And, and, um, we will have a booth as we do every year it's on. And, um, one of the things I wanted to do because I was seeing some of these emails is have a big board and ask people to write down but you, you know, your, their suggestions, I believe corporations are a person win. And I think that'll attract a lot of people. And I'm really anxious to see what I'm, I'm really curious to see what they write down. It'll make people think it'll, I think um, it'll be very, I think people gravitate to see what others have written. <laughs> so I think that's a really terrific thing. And the last thing I will say is we, we, we're determined to make a new sign. We have good signs, but we want something that's kind of like a wow factor um, to bring people around. And I was, I looked on the Move to Men website. I've been looking elsewhere. I'm trying to find a really cool sign that we can have made up. And if anybody has any ideas, uh, I can send you, I can post my email address in here or you can show whatever you want to do, however you best to get it to me. But we're really looking for something that's going to, um, impress people and make them think. So that's it. Awesome. Fantastic. Yeah. If, um, if anybody has any suggestions for it too, um, please put it in the chat. And I've, I've been thinking about the same thing, Sandy. I saw, um, in the affiliate newsletter, uh, California had a table recently and had, um, a robot, you know, those kind of visuals are so powerful. And I think that uh, I believe a corpse a person uh, visual will be really powerful for that as well. Well, we have um, I, I have a couple of those um, robots that people made, those boxes that we can fit into and we use them for parades and things. Um, and so I will bring that to the to the thing, um, to our booth. Hopefully we'll get rain out. <laughs> but um, so that is a really good marker. But I'm looking for a sign that we can use wherever we go. Yeah, for sure. And don't forget, we always have that the worker uh, characters, too, that can be translated yeah. onto. Uh, are, are there uh, any more of those? I mean, we I've used those so many times. Are there any more? I, I mean, what happened? Why did they just stop or is he still doing them or what's going on with that? Any updates on it? Well, he uh, Greg Stack. That worker has gone big time. <laughs> he is. um, um been the cartoonist for several sort of, I guess you could call it mainstream uh, lefty publications. I think he's been with and maybe still is the uh, political cartoonist for Politico. He's been, um, you know, with other other. So he's he's out there and his work has been tremendous and continues to be so. I hope we can use some of his stuff. OK, thanks, guys. Yeah, and I'll try to look around too. Um, I see your hand, Michael. You want to go ahead? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, actually, this isn't about when I would believe a corporation is a personal. I posted that in chat. But this is about that. See, I'm in California. California passed a law requiring crisis pregnancy centers to disclose whether or not they have licensed doctors on hand. And I mean, it's not that the crisis pregnancy centers bribed them not to pass the law, and they didn't. No, they did pass that law. And then the crisis pregnancy centers sued, claiming it violated their First Amendment right to freedom of speech. The Supreme Court agreed and struck down that law. And so, so I think that's a case that needs to be emphasized over and over again for any, any representative who doesn't like money in politics but won't co-sponsor HGR 54 either because they think nonprofits should have constitutional rights because this is because of course the crisis pregnancy centers are nonprofits so that's an example of why nonprofits shouldn't have constitutional rights or 
who thinks corporations need some constitutional rights to function, because this is also an example of how the reasons we don't want artificial entities to have constitutional rights go beyond just money and politics. So I think that crisis pregnancy center case should be emphasized again and again to get everyone on board who was on board before and even get more people or anyone on board who doesn't like money in politics. Because as this should be emphasized as a case about how not having constitutional rights must apply to nonprofits as well. And it's for reasons other than just money in politics. Yeah, absolutely. That's a good example. Um, Citizens United was a nonprofit corporation. So mm. there's yeah, that. Yeah, well, yeah, that's well, a that's a good that, one to point to that, as well. That led to um, money in politics. See, I was looking for an example of something that's not money in politics. Right. And, and of oh, course, that's this a powerful is both, one for sure. Yeah, yeah, it's powerful because it I think it kills two birds with one stone. Yeah. The stone being the case, the two birds being some won't co-sponsors because they think nonprofits should have constitutional rights. The other, those who think artificial entities need some constitutional rights to function kills both those birds. It explains both why, why uh, not having constitutional rights must apply to nonprofits, not just for-profit corporations, and but Absolutely. artificial entities must have no rights under the Constitution, not just the, contributing money to campaigns or spending money to influence elections. Absolutely. Good, good point. Mark, was your uh was that a hand up there? No, that was a thumbs up to Mr. Karcher. What, or Karch. What Michael's talking about. Yeah, yeah. good example. Absolutely. Okay. Um I anybody else would like to get on the chat? Paula, did you want to share something? Okay, I see you, Judith and Irene. You want to go ahead first, Judith, and then we'll let Irene have her moment. Okay. Um, just wanted to mention you were talking about that that uh, big creature that was at the at the Earth Day uh, uh, event at San Jose State University. Uh, the big robot type looking guy. And that was Patrick McCurcher again that had created that whole thing. And I just wanted to mention that he he was fine with my mentioning the last time to you folks that he. He is on, he's still working on a three different episode of, of a citizen, of a MTA documentary kind of thing. So when we're going to be working on a little bit this month, um, if it's something one of you liked would, would attend, but I got to tell you, it was, it's rough, it's rough right now. And so he's fine with once it's finished, you know, in, introducing it or sharing with everybody. Um, at the Earth Day, I think uh, Greg is familiar with this. At the Earth Day event we had, there were three young students uh, who were interested in starting a, a campus-wide MTA. So I've it, it, you know, I've sent out an email to a, a, a list of students that I haven't got much response about, only those three. So uh, right now the effort will be, you know, the end of the year is coming up. So People are taking their finals and so forth, but if, but the one gal that's the most interested, I'll probably continue to work with her and the other two a bit um, on getting her getting them involved with the student in uh, the student engagement coordinator, the person that works with students that want to develop organizations on campus. So we'll get started on that. I think if the I don't think the gals need to be too discouraged at this point because. Once we get that set up, we could do tabling and that kind of thing. There are lots of opportunities on campus to put up a table and do it, you know. So I don't think getting numbers once we get down on campus in person is going to be a problem. So we'll see how that goes. And it probably, there's probably not going to be a lot of progress on it until fall or, or getting near to the fall. So we'll talk more about that at that time. And the other the other thing was we're talking about the Senate and, you know, we're kind of looking at Katie, if, when it happens, when it happens, you, Katie Porter, Barbara Lee, um, more than Adam Schiff at this point in time. So we'll see how, you know, how progress is on those elections. 
in, in, and, and everybody else's work that they're doing in terms of trying to get a, 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 uh, introduced in the Senate. Okay, that's it. Thank you. Pass. Fantastic. Very exciting, Judith. Uh, I wish you much luck on that. That would be um, cool. That could be really powerful. Yeah. Hi, Irene. How are you doing? Hi, everybody. Greetings from Brooklyn. I'm doing pretty good. Um, and we've we put the group on Meetup. I haven't gotten any response from Meetup yet. It took us forever to establish a group. I don't know whether it's my technical abilities on a scale of one to ten. There are minus fourteen. But anyway, we finally did it. But I haven't. We haven't captured any participants from that. But I have about from my own email list. I have about four people who have expressed interest. So we're going to get started. Our first meeting is going to be um, May 22nd. Now I picked, I gave it a lot of thought of picking, we picked Monday night. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but people who tend to be interested in these kinds of things are busy every night. And Monday night usually isn't so filled up. Uh, so we'll see what happens with that. And I, we could always change that down the line. So that that's it. It's been a slow start. This is a good, now it's a good time of the year. There's a lot of street fairs and block parties uh, to do tabling and things like that, which I, I really haven't done. Um, I have a little trouble getting around, uh, but it, it'll get done, uh, especially on this uh, with the street fairs, because I'm just going to sit. <laughs> So that's it. I just wanted you all to know that it's been a long haul, but it's going to happen. Oh, and speaking Fantastic. speaking of senators, my senator is Schumer, of course, <laughs> and that's a laugh. He probably gets the most contributions. I mean, forget it. Everybody in New York is like, you know, our mayor. That whom I whom the the old one De Blasio, I mean every real estate company in, <laughs> in New York gave him money. Schumer, everybody gives him money. Drug companies, uh, especially financial institutions, forget about it. So I don't even know if we could. Yeah, talk to it's, him. <laughs> it's definitely a big problem. Definitely a big problem. But right. um, you know. Folks in in New York are endorsing, so there's there's definitely that, and um, you know, you can work on the ones that are your neighbors too. Yeah, Irene. Well, we got um, congressmen. So I'll reach out to you later about that and see if you want to, you know, start doing some of that work. I'm, I'd be doing excited doing to do what? It with wait, you. wait. <laughs> I missed what All you right. said. Um, just uh, uh, lobbying your reps. Oh, and okay. Yes, reps? definitely. No, I don't mind. Oh, guess who my congressman is? Who's that? What? Listen to this. Thanks to redistricting, I went from Nidia, Nidia Velasquez <laughs> to <Don't tell> me. <laughs> Dan Goldman, oh. who is a, one of the heirs of both Levi Strauss and uh, Goldman Sachs. And he spent, well, some places I read, he bought his seat. He spent $2 million. I, I read some places, $2 million. Other places I read, he spent $4 million running yeah, for Congress. It, it's so, unbelievable how much you think, money you he think he'll won. sign on? Nadia Velasquez has endorsed, though. She's Yes, she's yes. I got her, we got her last year. But Goldman, but okay. Goldman is opening his one of his local offices, um, about four blocks from my house. Oh so well, I, then we're definitely going to have to meet him. We'll talk about oh, it yeah. after. Uh, Not only that, later, I'm going to at, a, at yeah. another time. I'm excited to do that. Okay, um, <laughs> Deb, I see you're on stack. You want to go ahead and let us know what you're up to? Yeah, I wanted to to go ahead and uh, expound a little bit on what Paula. Uh, put in the chat and and Sandy also uh, said something in response to that. 
uh, Greater Dayton Move to Amend is going to be hosting an art contest for uh, students, Dayton students in grades uh, 9 through 12. And um, I, I guess you can say I'm the lead on this, but, but everybody in the chapter uh, is putting in their input and helping um, get this off the ground. We're going to be coordinating with the Dayton International Peace Museum and uh, hopefully before the end of May, reaching out to uh, high school art teachers before they leave for the summer so they can maybe work our art contest into their plan. Uh, and then, of course, we'll we'll announce it to students at the start of the next school year. We're not uh, anticipating uh, having an exhibit until um, March next year. And um, it's it's a, I like to think that it's a way to get not only students involved, but also their parents and the community to get involved. So we won't have any artwork to share. Um, it, it, there'll be political cartoons, we hope, uh, fine arts, you know, visual arts and uh, a performing arts category, and we'll be giving uh, prizes. Uh, but we won't have anything to share until next spring. So anyway, but that's what that's about. And, and everybody's working on it. And I really appreciate uh, Paula's input that she's had uh, on it. And that's it. Pass. Yeah, that's exciting, too. Um, that could be. I, I'm super excited to see what comes out of that. What creativity is shared. I see that you're on stack. Greg, and then Lawrence. Yeah, real quick, just want to uh, acknowledge Irene is quite the modest one. Uh, she didn't even <laughs> mention in the uh, chat, uh, I put a link to a recent interview. She did a uh, real street activist in New York City. So it's right, been a while right. checking out, and uh, we definitely, at National Move to Men, should uh, share that. Thank you. Yes. Oh, fun. I'd like to see that. It's in the chat, you said, Greg? Oh, you put it in the chat. Yeah. We'll make sure that gets in the agenda as well. Um, Lawrence, how are you yeah, doing? And I like, I'm doing fine also. Thank you. I like the way Irene was so positive and upbeat talking about everything that's so terrible. Um, I think that's actually at Move to Amend, one of our secret weapons, you know, if we're, and we are, you know, working strategically at the root of the problem and we're, we're, we can rest knowing that we're doing all we can do in the most strategic fashion so that uh, we can find a lot of joy in life, you know, knowing that we're doing our part. So I think Irene just, uh, you look at her and and she's practically glowing. Love it. Um, so I just wanted to mention in California, um, if you all could help us for uh, two more, two days, we're working on a big project um, together with our partner organization, Money Out Voters In. And uh, they believe that if we can get the money out of politics with Assembly Bill 83, then we'd be that much closer to uh, HJR uh, 54, what we really need, you know, need to do. But, you know, the question is, how do we get there with so much money in politics and all the all the politicians beholden to all that big money? So that that could really be a thing. And so it, this Assembly Bill 83, it gets foreign influenced corporations out of our politics. And uh, even as low as 1% uh, foreign ownership in a corporation, they wouldn't be able to put a penny into any election or into a, um, a, a ballot measure or anything. Uh, so it could be really, really powerful. And people would think maybe it wouldn't stand a chance, but Minnesota just passed it last week. The governor just signed it into law. Um, it passed their legislature as part of a sweeping democracy, re democracy reform. So, you know, if we can knock it down state by state, um, it would put, put us that much closer. And just check out the chat for the instructions on what you can do. You can just make two phone calls uh, tomorrow and two phone calls the day after. That'll have a huge effect. And let your friends know. Get, pass those numbers around because we need to put a lot of pressure because, you know, giant corporations are putting a lot of, two, a lot of pressure on those two folks to uh to kill the bill to uh so if it if it lives uh if it comes back to life on thursday uh it'll keep moving it'll probably pass because we spent six days talking to every person in the california state legislature um uh, every assemblyman and state senator and um 
most people are really, really excited about it, except for the ones that get all their campaign finance from the giant corporations that will no longer be able to put any money in politics. So pass. Yeah, thanks for that work there, Lawrence. Um, he had, I, I kind of spoke to Lawrence when he was at the State House, and he shared a story with me. He had went into one of the assembly members' um, offices, and they said that essentially that the person that put the bill up was a socialist, and that um, that they couldn't compete because you know they depend on that corporation that gets that has foreign ties. I mean. You can't get any more clear than that. If you, so just um, just crazy. Would anybody else like to get on stack? And Lawrence shared in the chat um, the numbers for the two assembly members, the president and uh, speaker. If there are no further affiliate updates, um then we will pass this over to greg to give us some announcements and some some important reminders all right well uh greetings everyone again um announcements there were of them these are repeats i want a very little time going over those because i want to spend a few minutes on that first item so let's dispense with these uh, items that you probably have uh, logged into uh, memory by now and uh, can regurgitate at a moment's notice. That being movement education program, please tell us your experience participating in it if you've gone through it. If you haven't gone through it, go through it and then give us your experience. It's a wonderful way to get on the other side of the uh, educational and organizing curve to uh, pass the We the People Amendment as well as uh, being part of social movements and social change in general. Uh, move to Amanda Eco Network, learn more uh, at that link. There's a call coming up uh, this week. You'll hear more about that shortly. Reminder, uh, we have a second Zoom line. So anytime you are organizing anything, including virtual meetings with your representative, feel free to reach out to us and uh, we can set you up that second line. And lastly, please remember, please remember, to submit monthly affiliate uh, reports so that we know and can lift the work you're doing up on our newsletter and social media and the like. So uh, feel free to, doesn't have to be long reports. And if there's any visuals along with that, videos, uh, pictures, whatever, feel free to send those along as well. Okay, uh, I wanna spend the rest of the time on that first item, why nonprofits do not need CCRs, which stand for constitutional right, reason this is on here is because we've heard from some of you who are reaching out, lobbying your rep, and this point has come up of, well, wait a second, we get sort of business corporations, but we have a call for nonprofits. And our short answer to that is no. And the reason for it is listed here. And I just want to take a few minutes to go over. There's um, sort of the main uh, link there uh, which is right next to the bullet point or the dot, that's a PDF. But the highlighted version, that's what I want you to go to right now. And in fact, you don't even have to because I'm going to Hopefully this will even work. Miraculous. Okay, so what I want to do, this is just basically the same thing that you will find on that PDF. I just put it on a Google uh, Drive uh, document so that I can briefly go over several highlighted sections. And I'm just gonna simply read what to me are the most important takeaways from this document that if you become familiar with, you can share verbally as well as align these sections on the PDF and, and hand it to or send it to or even send this version to your congressional office. Their consideration to help them understand that nonprofit corporations do not need and should not have uh, corporate constitutional rights. So here we go. Uh, the We the People Amendment affirms that all entities created under law, that includes all those types of corporate, including nonprofit corporations, uh, um, da, 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 uh, do not need corporate constitutional rights. 
um, uh, such entities exercise are subject to the political process. Some argue that an exemption should be created for nonprofit corporations. Uh, all corporations, both for-profit and nonprofit, exist only as a result of a chartering process. It is not intellectually honest to attempt to create a constitutional exemption for the types of artificial entities that one likes, but not for the ones one doesn't like. It has to be constant. It will create, if it would happen, if we would create a carve out, it would create a loophole that the wealthy elite would no doubt immediately exploit. The wealthy could create even more and larger nonprofits than even exist now. And their ability to control and shape public opinion, political will actually be strengthened. And their artificial entities would now be expli explicit beyond the legitimate political control of we the people because the constitution would establish that such entities have constitutional rights. So the takeaway is if we give, if we carve them out, then this ingrains nonprofits as having constitutional rights, and then we're really sunk. The real crux of the question is what steps should they as nonprofits have in relation to for profits and individuals as a class under our constitutional framework? Do nonprofits require constitutional protections uh, or not? The simple answer is no. And so here's a couple of cases that have been decided in the past. The first is Supreme Court case of NAACP versus Alabama. This is 1958. That case centered on the NAACP's refusal as a company to comply with a state order, a nonprofit company, uh, to turn over its list of members residing in the state of Alabama. It is defined that so many cite this case as a reason institutional rights when the majority ruling opens with this statement. I'm not going to read it. You can go back and read it, but it actually makes the case that they don't need constitutional rights as a for as a non-for-profit. It's not an intellect, it's not an institutional right or corporate right, but the rights of the individual members that gives standing to the institution in this case. And so I highlight this uh this is part of the same this quote. It makes the case even more clearly. It goes even further. And so this next sentence basically summarizes, in other words, the organization was properly asserting the constitutional rights of its individual members. Disclosure of the lists would violate those members' individual rights. This was not an institutional right being asserted, but an individual right being exercised by an institution that being with a legitimate interest in so doing. All right, a second case, NAACP versus Button. This was a case in which the Virginia legislature was attempting to prevent the NAACP from operating by passing a law preventing NAACP lawyers from offering pro bono legal assistance. The quote in this case, among many, says, we think the petitioner may assert this right on its own because, on, on its own behalf, because through a corporation, it is directly engaged in those activities. We also think petitioner has standing with the corresponding rights of its members. So again, the bottom line is the members by members having rights. That is the most important. And the company in this question, the nonprofit corporation, NAACP, is just simply exerting its, its standing to speak on behalf of its members. And it's the members who have the rights the fundamental rights, and therefore shielding NAACP. The exercising of individual rights by proxy is something that society has commonly recognized as both legally and ethically valid, from attorney-client privilege and a doctor-patient confidentiality to power of attorney. There has never, ever been a need for an institutional constitutional right to protect individual civil liberties. Civil rights for artificial persons is neither found in the Constitution of the, of the U.S. nor necessary to the proper protection of individual rights, nor to ensure that an institution can protect such a right by proxy. This other case is actually the flip side, in which the Boy Scouts of America, this decision in 2000, actually the Supreme Court found that the piece of paper, that being the charter of the Boy Scouts of America, is written on, is equivalent to a human being. So the Supreme Court in this case said the Boy Scouts of America is a human being. And as a result, 
discrimination against homosexuals became the law of the land because corporate constitutional personhood has been inflated to such an extreme that real has become subordinate to their own creations. And so thus a warning that if you give nonprofits corporate constitu or constitutional rights, this may be the result. The point of fighting corporate rule is not merely to get money out of politics, as important as that is, but we need to take our lives back from not just all of these you know, horrible companies, for-profits, but, and from the nonprofit industrial complex that attempts to dictate the policies and positions of the left and the right. AstroTurf organizations are an example. These wealthy corporate-backed nonprofits would benefit the most from the abolition of corporate rights if it included an exemption for nonprofits. People have rights, governments have powers, and the duties those powers enable them to carry out and everything else in between has privileges. So I end it there. Take a look at this. If you have questions, feel free to reach out. But this is something that is really important, I think, to have up your sleeve, have as something that you can make reference to as a retort to those Congress people who may be wary of supporting the We the People Amendment that doesn't protect nonprofit corporations. Pass. Awesome. Thank you so much for that, Greg. Um, reminder. And, and Kevin makes a good point in the chat. Feel free to read that. Um, thank you for that, Greg. Also using statutes instead of constitution to spell out the protections that are afforded to corporations allows the protection to be more carefully tailored to different categories of corporations, such as church corporations, journalism corporations, political, and et cetera. Statutory protections can also be modified over time as experience indicates more easily than constitutional rights can. Absolutely. Um, and just to say one last thing, just to say that uh, this document, the PDF version anyway, is already uh, among the background materials that when you go to uh, the We the People Amendment, you know, to do lobbying, uh, 118 campaign, uh, and then click on the link of background materials, this is one of them. So don't overlook it. Absolutely. And that's step step for step. You know, the the um, program's already been figured out, worked out, and, um, you know, perfected. So don't recreate the will either. All that work is, has been done. Um, use those examples. I see you, Margaret. Go ahead. Um, so two things. Um, if we could... Um capture the uh, Kevin's statement in the chat, I preserve it because it's really well worded and to the point, I'd like to be able to get it on paper and quote it. Uh, and the other thing is that it <clears throat> is always worth pointing out is that Citizens United is a nonprofit. Uh, Citizens United, the organization that started this whole um, increase in public awareness. And just to reiterate the point about AstroTurf, citizens organizations, and trade nonprofits, you know, the American Medical Association, I'm sure, is a nonprofit. Um, the, I'm sure that the pharmaceutical industry has an educational organization or a trade organization, et cetera, et cetera. So, <clears throat> As the article points out, it would just create a giant loophole that would be immediately exploited and make the situation worse. Pass. I added Kevin's comment to the very end of uh, the highlighted version. So if you click on that, it is on the very last page. And that'll be on the website? The highlighted... uh, I don't know what I'm going to do with this. Probably, okay. yeah, we should probably figure out what to do. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yep, it'll be somewhere. Well, you got my computer problem later. <clears throat> Fantastic. Does anybody else have any uh, questions or comments for Greg uh, concerning uh, non the nonprofit questions? Okay, great. Without further ado, we'll. I want to remind everybody, um, I believe a corporation is a person when a campaign is going on. Please add your ideas in the chat um, and we'll read them at the end. Um, spring actions, 
ways you can help on working on any of the following. Of course, petitioning. Do you know that's how we build power, how we're able to show power in our communities. Um, when you're doing public events like that, um, it's a good way to even reach people who aren't in your communities, right? Because they're coming and participating in these events when they're visiting their families and friends. Petitioning is very, very important to um, you know, our bottom line. We have over 492,000 uh, folks that have signed the petition so far. And um, let's keep that going. Hopefully we'll hit that 500,000 mark um, this year. Resolutions, of course, those are very powerful as well. We currently have um, over 600 resolutions uh, passed in communities across the country. Um, our affiliate is now working on, since nobody's sitting in the city council anymore, um, nobody there knows that we have endorsed. So we are going to do a reintroduction and then do what they've done in Ohio, which I think is a fantastic way to keep this issue um, uh, on the forefront, which is having a hearing um, every two years in some communities, every year in others, where um, they basically have a hearing and put corporate rule on trial. Um, if you wanna know more about that, please reach out to Greg, it's a fantastic program. And then endorsements. We are over 300, 737 endorsements as of today. Um, and uh, those, again, are another way to, um, uh, another way to reach out and um, to connect with other organizations um, and other communities on the front lines of uh, the struggle. And then pledge to amend, it's linked in here, it's up and running. So um, all of those candidates that are throwing their hats in uh, to the ring, it's time to reach out to them and let them know that um, you want them if they're running for office in your community, you want them to support the We the People Amendment. Um, and let's, I say, let's crash it again. Um, the language and the fluidity has been shortened and it's supposed, and I, and I don't it's expect it to, um, to crash, but uh, it wasn't the worst thing because we had so many candidates last um, election season that it um, overtook the system and it, was really pretty slow um, in loading in the last couple of weeks of the election because of that. So that is not the worst thing ever. And then of course, the local programming as um, um, as you know, we're doing uh, movement in power, uh, education and empowerment talks. These meets are similar to the old barnstorming uh, programs that we used to do. This is a great way to um, revitalize an affiliate or to connect and have programming with others in your community that are doing um, the hard work of democracy building. And um, this is a great way to connect. If anybody's interested, um, please reach out. Um, you can email outreach at move to and we will work with you to tailor make um, exactly the kind of programming that uh, will benefit you and your community. Um, and this could be MTA exclusive programming, um, internal strategy and discussion, or again, uh, bringing other groups together to have these conversations. Uh, does anybody have any questions about any of these um, actions, spring actions? Checking the chat. Um, Deb was commenting on uh, the democracy days in Ohio and a step state rep aid approach turned it and was full of praise for that kind of special event. It really is. Um, it, it's a wonderful way to uh, bring the community together and, and have the discussion that's so important to everything that um, we hold dear. So if there's no questions, I'm going to pass it over to you, Alfonso, for a fundraising fin fun update. Thank you, Janie. Uh, hi, everyone. So yes, uh, the spring uh, spring fundraising drive has kicked off, and we chose May 10 to do so. Um, and the reason is because, as many of you might know, May 10 um, 
1886 marks the birth of the first um, corporate person, which was the Southern Pacific Railroad, uh, very wealthy uh, railroad company. And so to highlight this important case, we are launching the, I believe a corp is a person when. Uh, this campaign uh, is very simple. All you have to do to participate is take a selfie with a sign where you are sharing uh, what it would take for you to believe a corporation is a person. Uh, some of the examples that have uh, been thrown out uh, right now in the chat are really great. Uh, some other ones that I've heard is, uh, I believe a corporation is a person when Texas executes one, for example, <laughs> or when Arizona deports one. Um, so get creative. Uh, uh, if you don't mind taking a selfie, uh, just grab your phone, um, get a sign and take your selfie like this. And then what you would do is uh, you would tag us either on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or, or all three of them you want. You can also send them directly to us uh, to info at move to And please, very important is when you're sharing your picture on social media, uh, please include the link move to amen.org forward slash monthly so that you can encourage your friends and family, uh, even challenge them to start a recurring donation or become uh, a monthly donors, whatever amount they can afford to do that. Um, so uh, please uh, help us by sharing that. Uh, we've been uh, sharing some of the pictures that we have on social media uh, and uh, feel free to jump on that uh, trend that we're trying to start. Also, uh, update on the hiring of the new fundraising coordinator. So right now, the, there's a short list of about 10 candidates. Uh, I believe five interviews have already taken place uh, with some more to come. And the proposed hiring timeline is as follows. So right now, we're conducting the application interviews. Uh, by May 29 uh, to June 9, we will be conducting the final selection and final interviews. Then by June uh, 12 to the 16, we're gonna be sending out the offer letter um, and then conducting the onboarding. Uh, hopefully by the fall, uh, September 4th, we're gonna be doing the, the fall campaign launch. And by then we'll have uh, somebody, a new fundraising coordinator with us. Um, so we'll keep you posted on that as, as uh, things uh, move along. Uh, but some ways that you can help us is uh, by participating and engaging with the various campaigns that I've mentioned, um, like helping us spread the word and inviting uh, your friends or uh, people that you know on social media, make it fun, make it like a type of challenge where you invite uh, 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 close friends that you know might be interested in this and my support to start a recurring donation. Also, uh, if you uh, don't already do so, you can you can start a new recurring donation by going to uh, mutuamen.org forward slash monthly. And if you are not camera shy and have a few minutes to spare, please consider recording a, a short two minute uh, top two minute tops testimonial video where you answer the three uh, questions as uh, why do you support the We the People Amendment. Uh, why do you like Move to Amend and why do you support us? And why uh, are you a donor? Um, this uh, will help us tremendously uh, because it's uh, the best uh, recognition is word of mouth or the best way to gain someone's confidence that you don't know out there is uh, word of mouth, somebody that you have as friends on Facebook or somebody that you know somehow. So this will help us uh, get more people that uh, might support us and haven't heard about us yet. Uh, so if you have a couple minutes to spare the, doing that recording, uh, please do so. And I'll be sharing a link in the chat where you should be able to share the recordings without any problem. But if you happen to encourage, encounter any problem, uh, please, uh, send me an email. Uh, I will also share my email and we can troubleshoot. But that link should allow you to just drag and drop any files, either the pictures that you want to share or the video with us without any problem. Um, that's all I have for now for uh, fundraising. Um, but again, um, please share far and wide with all your friends on social media. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you so much, Alfonso. Um, also, you can re you can interview somebody else if you know about somebody that is um, a 
moved to amend supporter. Um, Greg recently interviewed somebody from the center from the bio uh, biodiversity center. Am I correct? Right. Um, and they're, you know, they're supporters. So he interviewed them. It's a two minute interview. It's super quick. Just those three questions. Um, why you support move to amend? Uh, if we can put the three questions in the chat and um, it'll also be in the notes for the agenda. And I think this is the first time Dylan's been able to be with us for the coalition call. Um, he normally was in school on this day. Am I correct on this one? Yeah, normally I uh, I had classes all day, um, but semester's over, so now I'm here. <laughs> and he's been our intern since January. He's done a great job. He's helped us do some research on uh, statutory things we'll be sharing um, in the near future for um, different projects that are coming up, but um, I'm going to pass it over to him to come over, to go over some of the upcoming events. Go ahead, Dylan. Right. For, uh, for those who haven't met me, I'm Dylan. In turn, go to George Mason, currently in Connecticut right now. Um, and so let's move into the calendar review. So the first one we got is the Labor Caucus. Um, I can go ahead and send, the, send a little bit of a link on the uh, About page. Um, for the Labor Caucus, um, although as far as I can see, uh, if uh, if you would like to be a part of it, you can go ahead and contact Greg. Uh, that'll be uh, Greg at move to Um So yeah, that will be taking place May twenty fourth, two to three p.m. And it seems it's a monthly on the fourth Wednesday of every month. Uh, next up, we got the Econet call. Um, if you click the link on the uh on the dock it'll say uh, it'll give you the chance to rsvp and basically the econet um for those unfamiliar um basically trying to tie corporate rule into uh basically in the environmental impact of corporate rule so uh that that's kind of the purpose is to, to stop that that's the purpose of the econet is to stop that um so those are the national events going on all four of these events are actually um they're going to be online um so the local and state events we have the minnesota weekly work session um that let me see here so yeah that'll be it says each monday 1 to 3 p.m for those who are situated in um in minnesota and that'll be online and we have the uh florida statewide coalition meet monthly meeting which i believe jenny is a uh, uh, place of part in that um and that is may 25th 7 to 9 p.m uh that'll be eastern i believe all of these times are in eastern um even the uh, national ones so um if you can make it to those that would be uh be great if any of you guys are situated in florida i would encourage you guys to go ahead and join oh shit Awesome. Thank you, Dylan. Um, oh, sorry. I thought I left the call. <laughs> nope, you're still here. <laughs> Thank you for that. Um, appreciate those announcements. Uh, if y'all have events going on, Irene, you know, if you want to put your event on the calendar so that if anybody else is in New York and is looking to connect, that'd be a great place. If anybody needs any help with that, please reach out. Um, happy to assist and um, share how easy it is to get those up there. It's a, Like I said, it's a great way for folks to be able to um, participate. And I wanted to go ahead and look at the chat and read, um, I'll read some of these wonderful um, uh, ideas for I believe a corporation is a person. But first, I want to turn it over to Debbie. Deb, I'm sorry, I see you in stack. Go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure before we we say good night. Uh, thank you to all the national staff. I want to uh, especially call out uh, Jenny this week. She has been helpful to both Greater Dayton Move to Amend and Miami County 
uh, moved to a man in Miami County, Ohio. She's uh, helped us with a crisis. She's helped us uh, plan uh, a, a Zoom event. Uh, so I thank everybody on the national team. This week, a special thank you to Jenny. Pass. Uh, thanks so much, Deb. I'm happy to help. Um, so excited about your programming and all the fun stuff that you are doing. So um, thank you for that. Okay, let me see here. Um, we have Kevin said, I believe a corporation is a person when it goes into therapy to deal with the sociopathic behaviors. <laughs> that one's funny. Um, I like that one a lot. Um, I'll believe a corporation is a person when one receives last rights. That's it. Charter revocation. Um, Deb, the campaign is running through the end of May. Um, Mark says, I believe a corporation is a person when one has sex, becomes pregnant, delivers a natural human baby. I'll believe it then too. Um, Deanville, I believe a corporation is a person when it pays its fair share of taxes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, Deb, just to answer that question about the National Lawyers Guild, absolutely. They have endorsed, um, and uh, they also have agreed to, um, it, it's, it went further than just an endorsement. It, it was a resolution that, um, they will also help educate, um, their members and different charters about, um, the hazards of corporate personhood and money in politics and about, um, the amendment. Let me see here. Trying to make sure I'm not missing any. Um, I believe a corporation is a person when it's diagnosed diagnosed with melanoma. These are great, yeah. Um, let's see. I believe a corporation. This is another good one. Um, yet yeah, sad. I believe a corporation is a person when it dies of air pollution. I believe, okay, that one, that one. I believe a corporation is a person when it develops a conscience. Another good one. Please, these are fantastic. Um, take a picture, write it on a piece of paper. Uh, Dolores, she was shy. She took hers with her, her puppy and used him as part of her prop. It was adorable. I don't know if y'all saw it in the blast that went out about um, this campaign. But these are fantastic, and we really appreciate all of y'all, um, all the work that you're doing on the ground and in your communities. Um, you know, uh, this this quest to um, to share this information it's not easy. It's you know the the noise is hard to break through, and um, you know this isn't a this isn't a a sprint, as you all know, it's it's a marathon, and I'm just really honored to be on this journey with you all. If we have nothing else or any other questions for anybody, um, I will I just like, confirm that our. I, I'd like to just I like to just uh, cover the one that Deb put that her husband says all the time that he'll believe that a corporation is a person when Texas executes one. <laughs> I thought that was, I, I don't know if she already said that out loud, but I thought that was pretty clever. Yes, it is. We need, we need shirts, right? Um, <laughs> maybe there's a way we could get where we could order our own shirts with our own quotes. I'll be checking into that and we'll keep y'all posted. Greg's back. Go ahead, Greg. I think actually that Texas one is already on a shirt in our store. Maybe I'm wrong, but I thought that we had one. It does sound familiar. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like I've seen a bumper sticker, but maybe it was a shirt in this store. Um, but again, thank you all so very much. And um, it would be good if, I believe that our our store has a program where we could plug in our own words and get them printed like that. So 
I'm going to look into that and uh, share if there's a way to do that if y'all are interested. And um, let me put that on tips for next call. See about um, creating, I believe, corpse of shirts. And I will, uh, I'll check into that. Give y'all an update at the next meeting, which is June 20th, 2023. Again, please submit monthly reports using this form at the bottom of the agenda at move to amend.org slash report dash forms. Again, thank you all very much.